What began as one man's passion for collecting objects of art is today a treasury of antique wonders. At Salarjung Museum, the Arms and Armor Gallery holds special attraction. A mysterious magnetism which draws us to view the many forms which weaponry took for man's more aggressive warlike pursuits. Some of these weapons in the spectacular array at Salarjung Museum have been chosen specifically for their fine craftsmanship, opulence and exotic beauty. Indian weaponry which belonged to legendary princes and sultans are treasured as assets of the gallery. Gleaming swords, glittering daggers of the Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb, Tipu Sultan, Muhammad Shah, Bahadur Shah, Abdullah Qutb Shah are some of the historic items that flash before our eyes. Let's brace ourselves for this most exciting tour, an armory that is not only matchless but also priceless. The amazing display shows a variety of weapons used in war, tournament, self-defense and hunting. As a distinguished collector, Salajing sought only the finest, rarest and important pieces resulting in the creation of a princely armory. Historical interest, rarity, beauty of design, superlative craftsmanship and richness of decoration were the guiding principles behind its formation. Salajan Museum's unique collection of arms and armor has the power to open our minds and take us back to a time when warfare, chivalry, heroism, and the pride of possessing the finest armor were considered to be matters of high prestige. England, Germany, France, China. The museum boasts of arms from all these countries and it is noteworthy that most of these weapons are superbly decorated. Some have been enameled. Some are demiscent or inlaid with precious metals in wavy patterns. Others are richly engraved or embossed and some are even bejeweled. Arms and armor have been a vital part of virtually all cultures for thousands of years, pivotal not only in conquest and defense, but also in court pageantry and ceremonial events. Throughout time, the best armor and weapons have represented the highest artistic and technical capabilities of the society and period in which they were made, forming a unique aspect of both art history and material culture. It is a fantastic experience to tour this gallery which contains an amazing variety and sizable quantity of antique weaponry including firearms. Glance around and you will see a staggering display of swords, daggers, battle axes, spears, goads, maces, bows and arrows and gunpowder containers. Those are just the weapons of attack. There is an entire segment of defensive armor including shields, chest plates, helmets, suits of armor, coats of mail, which perhaps witnessed many a raging battle in some distant lands.
not to be outdone are the collection of period firearms like the 16th century matchlock and flintlock and the more recent muzzle loading guns. There are beautiful dueling pistols and revolvers and also weapons that cause maximum damage like blunderbusses and cannon in a volley of sizes and shapes. It is not the order or the history of things that counts here. It is the astonishing range of the weaponry that bewilders us in its huge numbers and myriad variations which makes us wonder at man's inventiveness in creating arms. We find here that the common dagger is not common at all. It is a rare treasure a piece of art and the many transformations the dagger takes in different regions is incredibly interesting. The Khanjar of Oman, the Yemeni's Jambia, the Indo-Afghan Chura and the traditional Indian Qatar are some examples that give us a closer glimpse of the bygone martial cultures of exotic lands. More ancient weapons of hand combat like battle axes, spears, lances are on display in a mind-boggling variety. The names are strange and the weapons are even stranger. since some of them were made specially to fulfill a specified purpose. Thus we have the Maru knife, the Bagnak or tiger claw, the Bhira Chira and the Afghan Shaspar tell us ancient stories of combat and self-defense that led to the existence of these unique lethal weapons. Believe it or not, but the best deal in India for sword making came from the foundries of the Deccan. The famous steel making centers in the Deccan were Kona Samudram, Yelgandal, Ibrahim Patnam, Konapur, Chintalapet, and the Gurkole. These places were renowned far and wide for the superior quality of steel. Even traders from Persia purchased steel produced at Kona Samudra and exported it for the production of arms and armor. The Salajan collection of magnificent swords is every man's envy and the museum's pride. More than armor, they were prized as decorative embellishments during royal ceremonial proceedings. Salajan Museum has a fabulous collection of swords 
many of them of Indian origin. Among the Indian varieties, there are the well-known Khanda and Sirohi swords from Rajasthan, the Pata and Dhob and Dha swords and Kukris from neighboring Nepal. For example, the Talwar or the sword with Indo-Muslim hilt was popular in Lahore, Sindh, Delhi, Lucknow and Hyderabad. Salarjung's zeal led him to acquire the arms and in particular the daggers of many legendary rulers of India, prominent among them being the Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb, Tipu Sultan, the brave heart ruler of Mysore, Bahadur Shah, the last Mughal Sultan and a rare Qutub Shahi antique sword inscribed with the names of Abul Hassan and Abdullah Qutub Shah. The Asaf Jahi era has its own share of glory and there are several swords which belonged to Salarjan III himself. The Salajan Museum is famous for its breathtaking collection of richly ornamented weaponry. Metal craftsmen in medieval India found brilliant techniques to decorate weapons. They used inlay work with great skill and we get to see some fine pieces with inlays of gold, silver and copper wires in floral designs and motifs. Some of the weapons are superbly coloured with minakari or enamel work. The scabbards and hilts of swords and daggers were often heavily bejeweled and encrusted with diamonds, sapphires, rubies, emeralds, topaz, turquoise, corals and pearls. Salajan Museum has many precious items of this kind on display. Lavish ornamentation was in all probability for swords and arms which were worn during formal public ceremonies and royal audiences. The double-edged sword blades from Europe were great favourites of the Indian royalty and the gleaming shining white Pirangi blades were cherished possessions and were elaborately mounted on Indian hills. Salajan Museum has a 16th century kirach with cross-shaped hilt and narrow double-edged blade inscribed with the date 1613. There is another similar piece dated 1635. These rare items, the Kirach swords, have a long, heavy, almost straight double edged blades that make it a deadly weapon in the hands of the warriors. When the mounted cavalry were armed with these swords, it was a sure destruction for all who came in the way. The double-edged European blades allowed both maneuvers of cut and thrust, which was a lethal combination. Salajan's collection gives us a vast selection of Persian armour to view. 
Persia was adept at producing the coveted damascened blades with their decorative inlay patterns and the museum has several Abbasi swords, shashir, daggers, maces and chain mail coat including steel helmets and gloves. Of special interest in the arms and armor gallery are the secret weapons like the guptis and unique pieces like the char aina of four pieces, a breastplate and a backplate with two smaller pieces for the sides all connected with leather straps. Armor was often custom designed for the more affluent and in many cases it gave birth to new and more advanced implements of warfare. During the reigns of the Mughals, weapons and armor of all kinds were much prized in India and much taste and ingenuity was lavished on their adornment. Every great man possessed a choice collection. Salajang Museum has an assortment of weapons and armor from these periods which gives visitors an insight into the magnificence, the methods and the means of warfare of those times. Today we are visiting the Salajang Museum for the first time with my family. It's an amazing experience. They have exhibits from uh, starting from the 1st century to the 18th and 19th century. And right now we are in the arms and uh, armory gallery. Here they have bows and arrows and armors and uh, all the way to uh, guns and pistols of the 19th century. And all these exhibits have been collected from different parts of the world. Like they have exhibits from Persia, uh, China, uh, Rome and different places, uh, different places in the world and uh, they have a lot of historic value and we are learning a lot and about the different influences from all around the world, uh, the influences our country has gotten from the various parts of the world. It's an awesome experience and uh, I, I would recommend anyone with kids to visit Salar Jung Museum and uh, uh, gain from this experience. The Mughal might at its peak was legendary and they are said to have owned some of the world's largest cannons, muskets, flintlocks, blunderbusses. Since firearms were in use since the time of Akbar the Great, India was no stranger to firearms. The Salajan Museum houses an admirable collection of firearms that are equally rare and varied as the armory. Firearms of extraordinary antiquity are showcased in the gallery and the fact that they were used hundreds of years ago by some of India's greatest emperors makes them all the more interesting and fascinating. There are flintlocks, match locks, repercussion locks, muzzle loading, breech loading and automatic guns, blunderbusses, ordinary pistols and revolvers ranging from 17th century to 20th century. The first firing mechanism was match lock introduced in the 15th century. It gave way in 17th century to the flintlock in general used until 1840. Muskets with rifle barrels came in 19th century. The invention of percussion cap, which is a small copper cap or cylinder, made possible the use of cartridge. The revolver came into existence. The automatic rifle appeared in 1908. This journey of development and discovery are represented to the best extent possible in the Salajan Museum.
modern firearms as we know them today came into existence much later date. Some rare and quaint earlier models are displayed in Salajang Museum. precious piece which Salajang Museum displays as a prized possession is the pistol of Tipu Sultan who was acclaimed one of the greatest warriors kings of India. British pistols and guns were masterpieces and rightly considered to be the most collectible of firearms. Painstaking attention to detail afforded to dwelling pistols was applied every bit as rigorously to spotting guns. Salajang Museum has arms manufactured by quite a few notable British firms. The collection has arms and armour from Solingen, Thornhill, London, J.R. Gaunt and Sons. Henry Kinson, Paul Mall, London, and Joseph Rogers and Sons, Sheffield. Arms purchased by Salajang from the British firms in India, including. Badham Pyle and Company, Rampard Row, James Rennie and Company, Secunderabad, are also displayed in the museum. Well-known gun manufacturers represented in the collection are Smith and Wesson, Samuel Rock, Devsme Paris, and Wood and Sons. If arms do make a man more honoured, then Salajang deserves every accolade for amassing a spectacular collection of weaponry that few can equal or afford. A visit to Salajang Museum Arms and Armour Gallery is quite an overwhelming experience for those looking to immerse themselves in the history of weaponry and warfare. Salajang's forays across the country and overseas to acquire the most exotic and unique pieces for his collection is well worth the effort. We are truly impressed by the collector's colossal patience and determination. Our next episode is a much eagerly awaited one, the famous clock gallery of Salajang Museum with more than 700 clocks on view, perhaps the largest collection in the world. Now get ready to chime the time, set your clock for the same day, same hour next week. <laughs>